And welcome back to the latest anime news for the week ending uh, June 5th, 2021. Let's get into it, shall we? Um, yeah. S gotta start off with this one, unfortunately. Uh, publisher Hakusensha announced on May 20th that Kentaro Miura, creator of the legendary Berserk manga, has passed away. He was only 54 years old and <clears throat> passed due to acute aortic dissection, heart-related. Mm -hmm. uh, Miura made his professional manga debut with a story named Once More in Weekly Shonen Magazine in 1985. Then he published the original one-shot version of the Berserk manga in 1988, and the full manga series began serialization in Hakusensha's monthly Animal House in 1989, where it's continued until now. It has more than 40 million copies in circulation, and its 40th compiled volume was published in Japan in September 2018. It inspired uh, two TV anime series and a trilogy of anime films. Hakusensha posted his obituary on the website in both Japanese and English. Appreciate that. Uh, Young Animals Editing Department posted their own message following his passing, saying in part, and I quote, Our memories of him are delightful and filled with his smile from the times when we were together. He always talked so happily about his favorite comics, cartoons, and movies. We had honestly never seen him angry or upset. He was a happy person with the heart of a young boy." End quote. Artists, writers, and creators from across the industry have expressed their thoughts and condolences on his passing, often sharing their memories of working with him or posting illustrations that he had done for their own works. Uh, and across the tributes, it is clear he was deeply respected and deeply loved by everyone who encountered him and his works. Fans also had responses across the world and across the internet, getting together in large groups and games to pay tribute to his works, posting their favorite berserk panels on social media, and discussing the impacts his work has had on their lives. In an interview just last month, Miura said he was planning to start wrapping up the storyline soon, and though we won't get to experience the ending he had in mind, his impact will continue. Always sad. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Especially only 58. Yeah. That, that's, a, that's a rough one. That's nuts. Yeah. Um, particularly tough with somebody who is who was doing one work for decades and moving towards that ending, and now we're never going to get that ending exactly in that way. Yeah. Um, yeah. Do you guys think that the publisher will pick someone to end it? Hmm. So is that close, so to speak? In immediately, I would... Not, not immediately, no, not. no, no, no. Yeah, yeah no, no, no. Really but, yeah. hope not. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, I would think after a respectable period of time, you may get a special issue mm -hmm. that either is non-ending, so it's like you just yeah. have a special edition where the characters exit themselves, mm -hmm. appreciate the audience, mm -hmm. and go off no ending. Yeah. Because, uh, yeah, you know, you really offend a whole ton of people if yeah. you end it in a yeah. way that they don't feel genuine to the mm -hmm. to the creator's intent. Yeah. So it's going to be a little it, bit of time. They should carefully tread on that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah I, I, I think in a purely mercenary tone, um, I think that that's exactly what they're going to do. Because I think mm -hmm. that they'll just, somebody else will pick up the world of mm -hmm. Zerk, of Guts, and, mm -hmm. and play with it mm -hmm. eventually. Yeah. Um, it makes too much noise on, and I mean this in a good way. It makes too much noise on Netflix, um, mm. Berserker, mm -hmm. and to, for it to to really end, or yeah. at least end in the way that that he probably had it in mind. That's um, that's the other so question. I can't imagine. I, I, yeah, I, it's it's like, do we, do you just simply, hopefully have someone who can wrap it up in that way where mm -hmm. he just kind of walk rides off into the sunset so yeah. to speak and then the other characters move off and they you know you know, do whatever and they, they, move, they move the story forward mm -hmm. um because in, in in because it's it's one of those things with berserk is not you know a huge money maker but mm -hmm. it's so solid mm -hmm. and it's so recognizable it's kind of hard to see it just go okay stop yeah well, and the yeah, other question it's is, hard to see that. do they know what the ending is? Like, yeah. Does anyone know what that is? Mm -hmm. So that's a, another tough thing. And we certainly had other works by other creators where they passed, and everyone's like, okay, 
hands off, yeah. you know, and we right. just move on from there. So I don't know. Um, and then you always get that, that difficult, difficult fan situation where folks want to have an ending, but do they want somebody else's ending? I, yeah. yeah, so you yeah. risk a lot of hatred <laughs> coming out of that. Yeah, there will be hatred coming out of it. But, yeah. well, you know, can you manage <laughs> yeah. that? Sadly. Um, so that is definitely a, a tough situation all around. Um, but moving on to happier news. Uh, the staff of Otakon, which if you don't know already, is one of the U.S.'s largest annual anime conventions, announced this week in a somewhat <laughs> confusing flurry of tweets and a sudden Twitch stream <laughs> that the... Uh, yeah. The event will be held in person oh, this God. year. Yay. Uh, Yay. Scheduled for the yeah, scheduled for the weekend of August 6th to 8th in Washington, D.C. The staff call this year's event the, quote, first major convention event to be held as D.C. reopens, end quote. Um, they will not host any international guests this year for obvious reasons, travel restrictions. Right. Other possible changes could include shortened hours or the cancellation of especially high traffic events like the dance. Um, staff added on Twitter that additional guidance will be issued mid-June based on the city's guidelines. Masks will be required in most settings except situations like socially distanced cosplay pictures or panel presentations. Uh, proof of vaccination will not be required, though Otacorp Highly recommends vaccination for all attendees. Uh, Otakon requested donations in early months of this year to support the organization that holds the con as it was in a precarious position after the 2020 event was canceled uh, and was in danger of having to close the con permanently. As of March, the event had raised more than $34,000, so apparently that helped. So, this was... <laughs> <laughs> it it was something. So I mean, how I, confusing I was it? I don't I don't get any tweets okay, or okay. whatever yeah. things. So, so they started off right, okay. So they 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 kind of sent the message out, hey, we're opening, mm -hmm. and then okay. they said a, a little bit longer letter on the website and a couple other places saying, hey, this is what's happening. It's mm -hmm. a go. We're doing stuff, and we're figuring stuff out right now. Mm -hmm. And then they got really excited, I think, and they decided we're going to answer in an open forum on Twitch stream everybody's questions about Otakon and what it's going to be like. Mm -hmm. and so they got, um, I think they, they bit off a little bit more than they could chew. And I actually watched the stream as yeah. it was happening, and it was um, awkward. Yeah, <laughs> and 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 non-informative. No, um, it was so. It was the con chair, and it was the president of the board who who, who zoomed. Who basically went on to zoom like we're doing now, mm -hmm. and then you know put it onto the Twitch feed. And um, it was very much it, because I think what they were probably expecting was people asking about you know simple questions, easy questions. Will mm -hmm. there be international guests? Do Right. You know, is this program going to be on? Is that program going to be on? Is, you know, isn't this Do wonderful? I have to have a mask with my uh, cosplay? Mm -hmm. or, you know, it's just all this wonderful, you know, like Kumbaya moment. Yeah. And right. it turned it and what it was really about. And by the way, the people who are asking questions, the fans who are asking questions were very excited, very polite. Very yeah. Good. This wasn't a, a, a crap show. Okay? Yeah. Mm -hmm. it, it, they, everyone was, but they genuinely wanted answers to very good questions. Mm -hmm. One of them being that was addressed this weekend, which was, hey, um, I've been kind of waiting to see whether or not you were going to have it. So can you reopen the badge thing? Mm. And we didn't get an answer for that. Mm. Well, the answer is you have until basically the step mm. to to get your badge, to, to buy it, to get your badge so you don't have to. Gotcha. Uh, to get in. Um, they, you know, were able to say some definitive things like the AMD minus is happening. The whole mm. thing at uh, fashion show is not happening because the person is stuck in Japan. They're, they're, they're <laughs> right. there. Mm -hmm. So yeah. they, they can't come over. Um, but they were asking questions like, do I have to wear a mask? Do we still have the social distancing? Do we have to provide proof of vaccination? Do mm. we have, can, you know, um, what are the lines are going to look like given that this is COVID and we still have mm. to do these things? What are yeah. the CDC guidelines for? Very good question. Mm -hmm. Very important, good questions. 
to which there's no way. And, and by the way, this is this is not on Otakon. Yeah. The, 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 those people, there's no way they could have had those answers. By the way, there's just no way. It's just I don't think they were expecting to be asked those questions. <laughs> so they kind of so the con chair kept and kept like going. I'm sorry, I have to uh, throw you under the bus, Madam President, but what do you think? <laughs> and the poor woman is sitting there and she and she made it very clear she did not want to be on Zoom. She did not want to be doing this. And mm -hmm. she was just kind of like going, ha, 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 nervous giggle, nervous giggle, nervous giggle, and then trying to answer the question. And the answer to 90% of the questions were, was the following. We're discussing it behind the scenes we are aware of this. We don't have an answer. Follow the CDC guidelines and what the local government says. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, and and then just and I I gotta say, not just that. It was that's a really good question. We've been discussing this behind right. the scenes, and there's there, there, there's a lot of elements to this that you you've got to work on, and you know. Um, they're, they're, it's, it's a really complicated issue, and we want to do what's right for the fans and for you. And we really, we really, you know, care a lot about safety, and we don't know. Right. <laughs> round and around. Yeah. And around. So we stop every, here. I don't know. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. yeah. I don't know. Mm -hmm. So, one of the one of the things that made me laugh was somebody asked the question. Somebody had asked the question: What are the lines going to be like? Because the lines are usually horrible. Mm -hmm. And the con chair actually said this on camera. Now I can understand it, and and I'm actually going to talk about it on my on my channel mm. this upcoming week about the lines at Otakon. And it's okay for me to say it because I'm kind of you know being the critic. But if you're the con chair, you don't sit there going, "Oh yeah, before I was con chair, you call this line con." I'm like, "Oh dude, no." <laughs> you know. Wow. Well, yeah. and then what was what yeah. was the next thing out of his mouth? Um, suck it up. Yeah. Just, suck it up, Buttercup. Yeah, it was, it was, in so many words, it was, yeah, that's just, we got to live with it at Otakon. It's like, oh. Yeah. I was like, damn. I mean, that's something I would say on my channel. <laughs> yeah. You're the con chair. You don't, yeah. you don't need to be saying that. Yeah. But, you know, but one of the things that really did surprise me was that they did not cap the attendance. I was certain yeah. they were going to cap the attendance. Really? And it, mm -hmm. Yeah, no, it's all open. Yeah. It's full on open. The city said, uh, no, we're full on. Mm -hmm. And ah. they need that money. Because you got to understand, D.C. is a convention town. I mean, that's a right. huge, mm -hmm. huge. And that, that convention center is beautiful. Yeah. I've never been in there. I haven't been in there yet. Well, I believe DC also does uh, politics or something too. It's something along those lines, yeah. 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 But like that's, 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 so that's more of a was there for four years. The, the, I, yeah, that's yeah. more of a cost. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's a sunk cost. Right, yeah. oh. So, I, so yeah, there was a lot of non non questions, but then they said, you know, hey, keep an eye on our Twitter feeds mm -hmm. and our social media feeds. Yeah. And sure enough, yeah. the information is coming out and it's rolling out pretty quick. So. Mm -hmm. Okay. If you guys haven't watched, I would actually tell you all do not watch the Twitch stream. <laughs> It'll just make you rage. Yeah. It'll tell you, ah, yeah, 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 I don't yeah. understand. Yeah. So just go out there and just watch the you know, your malt just, liquor yeah. moment. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and, and again, to be clear, these are both clearly lovely people. Yes. Very, yes. very nice people who are doing their best. They just made, in my opinion, a poor choice in the moment to jump on yeah. Twitch to do a video stream. Yeah. Didn't they were just excited. Provide. Yeah, exactly. They were they were just excited to do it and so happy to do it. I and trust me, I was I mean, just to get the announcement, I was just like, oh wow, this is awesome. Yeah. And and so that it was really nice. And one of the things I want to say and I actually will be saying it again in the upcoming video on my channel. Keep on plugging my channel. Yeah. And uh <laughs> you should put that up behind um, you, Steve. <laughs> Doggy Observer please watch um no uh but is that keep in mind folks that three weeks ago they didn't weren't even sure that they were going to have it yeah like, they, they yeah. weren't even sure it was going to be a thing and they've got basically eight weeks is it eight weeks now no it's less than eight weeks August, June. to put a yeah. a, a con soon. that good that can be yeah. somewhere between 20 and thirty thousand people together in eight weeks mm -hmm. and still maintain their own lives of fans yeah so this is so be patient with them. Mm -hmm. Be patient. Be patient. Yep. And I can say it. 
the lines are going to exist simply <laughs> because of the COVID stuff. Yeah, yeah. And it's the, well, they're yeah. just going to happen. So, and you need to plan accordingly. And but the upshot to this, even though it is going to be reduced hours, mm. is that the reason why they're doing the reduced hours is because they're doing a deep clean and sanitizing every night. Each night. Yeah. Wow. So that's yeah. why they're. Yeah. So each. So that's why they're closing the, mm-hmm. the con earlier at night. So they can come through and just you know. And for and any of you, that be kind of, for any of you who've been there before, you know the size of that place. Yeah. <laughs> but but you know what? But you know what? This might be the con that not only will will hopefully no one mm. get COVID, mm. but there might not be any con crowd <laughs> for once. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> you know that is a frequent discussion at where I work. It's like, hey. They're lifting some restrictions. Uh, here's a side question. Has anybody had a cold lately? And it's like, <laughs> yeah. oh, good Lord, you're right. We've been wiping yeah. everything down so much and wearing masks and being very careful hand washing. It's like, yeah. other than, like, the worry of COVID, like, nobody's had a cold. Nobody's had regular flu. Everybody's been, like, right. ridiculously not sick. Yeah. Like, this is weird. <laughs> <laughs> well, so here's my question. Um Given the what fact, we learn? No, 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 no. <laughs> given the fact that again, it's a little over uh, two months away, and by that point, assuming that the lockdown measures sort of continue in uh, as you know, as they've been, folks will have you know be out and about. There'll be you know masks will be off in stores and so forth, and restaurants will be pretty much back to normal. Um, but this will be the first like major con. Yeah. Do you think we're going to see dramatically more attendance because folks are excited? Oh hell yeah! <laughs> or will there be effective people going? No, it's I I, I got there's going to be like a hundred thousand people. No, I, <laughs> <Be> like <laughs> I think I think the desire to go is definitely there, and there yeah. could be a hundred thousand people to go. They're going to be there, but I'm going to tell you what's going to happen. The parents are going to say nope. And Great say, point. And 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 yeah, I'll and I'll tell you it. why. And I'll mm-hmm. tell you why. Is mm, the riots here in Baltimore? Con attendance went from thirty three thousand to twenty four. To twenty four people or twenty four thousand. Twenty four thousand. Thirty three thousand to twenty four. Hey guys, and, it's all and the room. major <laughs> questions. And because you know, I do the I do the where to eat for Otakon mm-hmm. and I talk yeah. about these things yeah. and the questions that I was getting, the questions that Otakon was getting all the time from the parents was, is, do you think there's going to be violence? Do you think this is going to happen? How can you be sure? How do I know? How do I, yeah. it's like the very panicky parent thing. Going sure. on. So if you have parents who are just, you know, you know, fortunately they, they are being concerned for their children, <laughs> yeah. um, you know, saying, Hey, Look, I understand that you know, we're opening. This is where I thought the cat where they did where they released the amount of attendees coming in that mm. the convention center would allow it, and the fact that Otakon is also allowing it mm. um, really surprises me. Because if you said to me, "Okay, there's going to be a cap ten to fifteen thousand people," mm-hmm. then I think you would see ten to fifteen thousand people show up. Right. True. But since it's since it's opened up, I don't mm. think you're going to see the twenty. 20- 25 to 30,000. I think it's going to be much smaller hmm. just simply because parents are really worried and yeah, cons and the let's be demand honest, is so the demand is going to be high. We haven't and, and had any cons until this now mm-hmm. being announced. It's like, so everybody, and I hate to say this at children out there in, in chat land, don't do this. Right. But I envision, <laughs> hey, I'm going to go to, you know, such and such friends, like mm-hmm. parents' place. I'm going place. to Bobby's place, and we're going right. to watch anime mm-hmm. there. Right. It'll be totally safe. You know them. It's okay. Then three days later, a kid comes home and they're like, yeah, that's great. Where'd you get the Otakon bag? <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah. you know there is so much pent-up desire to get mm-hmm. to a con, to finally get to a con. And mm-hmm. it's like, I think there's going to be capacity mm-hmm. there. I plus. I, yeah, we'll, we'll we'll see. Yeah, we'll see. I, I agree. It's what it's worth. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. But one of the things I am going to be doing for Otakon, even though I'm not sure I'm going to be there, because I'm kind of mm-hmm. <clears throat> because the way that they're structuring it, of the stuff that I enjoy, yeah, is probably going to be reduced to, to very little. Mm-hmm. Um, but for the, for the other fans, I think it's good and they should go. Mm-hmm. Um, 
but I'm going to still go down to DC and see what's going to be open, what's still open, mm. or what's still around with restaurants and things are still around. So I'm still going to do a where to eat for other months. Okay, you're good. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Brent and I'll take you to a great Ethiopian place. Yes. Mm. My favorite. <laughs> <laughs> but we definitely got to go to the ramen place again. Mm. That ramen place was good. Yeah. Yep. Definitely. Um, that's another question I have for, for this con, um, which there's yeah. no way of, of knowing, is what's the food situation going to be like, and what are the, what's the hotel situation going to be like at that point? Yeah. From what I understand, the and it's sort of connected to the hotel, mm. is that I don't think they're opening up any other um, mm. entrance ways. That's right. It's the, the one entrance way. Yeah. yeah. Well, no, actually, no. They're going to allow the underground concourse to oh, okay. the hotel oh, open. Cool. Okay. Um, oh, okay. But the main entrance is still the way to go. Mm-hmm. And that's, I think they're, I, so those of you who go to Otakana and you're going to this particular convention center, it is, DC is not Baltimore. Baltimore was much more lax because mm-hmm. Baltimore is not the seat of power for the yeah, United States of America. Exactly. So, you know, this, they take security a little bit more seriously down there, so they're mm-hmm. so they're not going to have those side doors open. No. To, oh, to come no. in. So it's going to be the main entrance yeah. and you're going to have to go down. And, Especially you know, not after the past Open your bags. Years. Yeah, you're going to have to open your yeah. bags and, you know, all that, mm-hmm. all that yeah. stuff. So, so that's yeah. the thing. And that's why if those of you are watching and you definitely know you're going to have a con, do it now so you can get your badge so you don't have to wait long when it happens. Which, did they announce about the people who bought for 2020 and didn't get, like, because the con was canceled, that mm-hmm. they didn't get their uh, badge? Did they make any mm-hmm. discussion about that? I didn't Believe ask for did. a refund. Yeah. Yeah, they so. did, kind of. But if you go back to what they were saying last year, basically, it, you had a choice. Either you... Um, refund or refund, stick with yeah. them or stick with them right and, and i stuck so, with them and i so have not you seen be, the email i have not seen anything from them you yeah. should probably go to the what was it to whatever the, the oticon uh, site uh, yeah. oticon site and see yeah. see, see where yeah. you go to, to ask about that yeah um because there were people out there who were just like okay and then the next question was you know of course well what if i buy the ticket what if i had bought the ticket for 2021 Mm-hmm. But now I don't feel comfortable about about being there. Do right. I get a refund? Mm-hmm. The answer is no. Yeah. yeah. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, as of the Twitch stream, which I'm sure has changed, uh, they did not have an answer on if you bought a ticket for like 2019, 19. then to 2020, then to 2021. Yeah. So, but they, they may have figured that out by now. Uh, interesting, because I, I, you know, I was. <laughs> hoping that I'd just get a badge that would show yeah, up when no. they announced there was going to be an Otacon. I'm like, mm-hmm. nope. I paid you people. Yeah. Where's my, where's nope, my damn nope, badge? No, 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 no. no that's, that's not the Otacon way. <laughs> uh, the Otacon way is to make it, to do things the hard way. Mm-hmm. Which getting the refund was the harder option of those. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's like the refund process was like convoluted and whacked. And then if you just said, nope, I'll just take a badge whenever you guys get on with it. It's like, okay, then none of us have to do anything. Well... <laughs> Oh, now you do. They, you know, their their subtitle is, you know, uh, by fans for fans, and it very much is by fans. By fans. <laughs> yeah. So, so the database yeah. that has my log of having paid for a three day card badge is it's there. Up. Yeah. Well, it's probably more like a Google sheet. And it's you know? probably in somebody's <laughs> backpack somewhere in like Des Moines. Like, ah, you son of a. Yeah. Or it's, on a, says, it, it it's on a 3.5 flop, floppy disk. <laughs> yeah. yeah. In Lotus. Five or and a quarter. Or as Fisher says, five and a quarter. Um, you know, just get it and keep it as a souvenir, right? Like yeah. the, 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 the badge for the con that never was. Yeah. Uh, well, I actually, when they first announced that they were doing weird things, mm-hmm. I'd actually ask that question. Yeah. Because when I, I was like, what's going on with, with this? Do I, you know, are you going to send me a badge or something? And they were like, no, because X, Y, and Z. And I said, are you guys going to like, do merch or something or do like a mm-hmm. con badge that's like 2020 slashed out or right. something. Yeah. They're like, well, we're actually considering what kind of merch mm-hmm. we can do with the con that not, that never was. You yeah. Know, like, well, it's, it's fine because the con chair just, you know, I, I would never have bought it up. They said, Whoa. Oh yeah. That's the other thing is that they, I don't know if the answer has been made to this yet or mm-hmm. not about whether or not there's an online component where people, right. Can, you know, see things online 
And I don't think that's been answered yet, but mm -hmm. I could be wrong. Yeah. But at the time of the Twitch stream, that question was asked. He goes, oh, no, uh, you know, we don't know yet. You know, we still have to figure things out. We don't know. Talk to you guys and blah, blah, blah. And he goes, but, but you know, we, we think you'll be fine. You know, on con, or on con. But online uh, Otacon for 2020 was, um, but so we, we thought it was successful. Was it? <laughs> that was my reaction. Let's, like, define, really? let's define, really? let's define okay. that. Yeah. Let's define that word. What you, what it are was the metrics there, and as long as you say it was there, then that's successful, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Mm, <laughs> huh. Weird. I mean, Galaxy Con, for their part, they have mm. constantly been rolling stuff out. It's mm. amazing, mm -hmm. you know? that I get every single week, like something else, like Shatner's mm -hmm. back mm -hmm. on like streaming and Deep Space yeah. Nine people. I'm like, damn, GalaxyCon, I don't know where you're getting the cash out of this. Y'all are just cranking oh, yeah. on this, keeping it like yeah. in the in the know, in the public eye mm -hmm. all the time. I'm like, I was, I was ranting with Steve, you know, other tabletop gaming cons have been doing pre-mailed badges for years and years. And, you know, you, you register ahead of time, you know, at least like two months ahead of time, and you get your badge in the mail. And Otakon still can't do it. It's like, <sighs> but. Which I did for the, the, to be the clear, badge to be mailed to me. Well, yeah. yeah. Um, and to be clear, for this iteration, I would understand if they're like, we just don't have the lead time. Um, but still, it's one of those things where they've been, they've been promising for a while, but hasn't quite shown up yet. But enough of that. Let's move on to yo ho ho, and some piracy. Mi ho yo? Uh -huh. no, no, <laughs> no, no. Quite, quite the opposite of piracy. Um, you may remember a while back when manga piracy was under heavy investigation in Japan. Yes. This week, the Fukuoka District Court officially handed a guilty sentence to oh. the alleged administrator of Japanese manga piracy site Manga Mura. Uh, in charges of copyright infringement and hiding criminal proceeds. Oh, yes. Wow. The culprit was sentenced to three years in prison and a fine oh, of oh, oh, 10 oh, oh. million yen. That's about $91,000 plus, because I think the 10 million yen, I think was the max was the maximum for, for like that, plus a fine, initial fine of 62 million yen. That's about oh. $565,000, which just happens to be the exact amount that they allegedly earned in revenue from the site and deposited in a foreign bank account. Oh, oh boy. Oh. 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 Judge, just, just applause on that one. Wow. Um, so for context, Magamura opened in 2016, so only five years ago, and was revealed to be under investigation in 2018 after Kodansha and several other publisher filed, publishers filed criminal complaints. According to Japan's Content Overseas Distribution Association, in the six months between September 2017 and August 2018, Mangamura was accessed about 620 million times, which oh. caused an estimated 320 billion yen worth of damage oh. to Japanese copyright holders in Japan during that time. That's about 3 billion US dollars. Oh my god. Now, to be clear. Six months. In six months. Now, to be clear, the way they calculate that is to say, you know, for every, uh, you know, volume accessed, that is worth, you know, $12 of payment for the Kindle version or whatever, right? Right. So it's a regular, it's a relatively, in, it's, it's not perfectly accurate as a number, right, sure. but in scale, <laughs> it still gives you an oh, idea. Yeah. Well, I wonder when it's going to start with the offshore streaming sites. Mm -hmm. They're going to have to find a way to get people, though. I mean, that would almost be like, hey, you're an offshore streaming site, but let's talk about how we can make you go legit. Why don't you fly in to Japan from your, <laughs> from your country and we'll have a talk. Yeah. Then like you have somebody, you know, stay there with a sign waiting for the person to show up and the, like 12 police officers behind them. Hi, you're on our property now. Suddenly Manga Core has a whole new thing. Yeah. Oh, ouch. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to sting. Oh, <laughs> But uh, yeah, I mean, this is this is pretty major when you think that's you know, you know, three years of jail time. Yeah, yeah. 
just for, for, for manga piracy. Um, and then, and again, that's a total of about six and six six hundred fifty thousand uh, dollars, which is again not massive, but the point that they're they're yeah. is the all of their revenue, basically. Yeah. Um, uh, and the fact that they, you know, wired it to a foreign bank Thank when all this happened, right. it's like, you knew. You knew what you're doing. Mm-hmm. Oh, no, we were just getting a better interest rate. <laughs> yeah. Sure you were. Sure. <laughs> sure you were. Now, the interesting thing I would wonder about is, mm-hmm. you know, having seen things like um, um, anime where it's somebody's parent mm-hmm. um, goes to jail and then the kid sort of ends up as like a pariah because oh, of a yeah. parent that went to jail. Mm-hmm. Like, I wonder who, you know, for the Mangamora people, um, now that they're going to, the, the fine's probably not as much of a social stigma as mm. the three years in jail. Yeah. Right? It's like, how is right. that going to affect mm. those people? When, you know, that, Absolutely. that particular uh, person, <laughs> administrator, uh, for the rest of their life. It'd be, that'd be interesting. That's a great point. Because it's not it's not a violent crime. It's a very white collar crime. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, yeah. In the U.S., it very would be much. like, oh, slap on the wrist, three years. Pff, I'm Martha Stewart. I'll be out mm-hmm. doing plenty of shows and stuff and earning cash just fine. But that person, I wonder how it will end up for them yeah. trying to get jobs, trying to you know, trying to mm-hmm. do anything industry wise, whether yeah. they're going to be pretty much a pariah from here on out. And I suspect it's one of the reasons why they're going after these folks is to send a message to say, like, this isn't just something, again, it, especially when it's on this sort of monetary scale yeah, um, of saying, you know, clearly this is not just somebody throwing up scans of some obscure manga somewhere so folks can see it. Um, that, you know, if this happens in, and, you know, uh, you're caught, bad things happen. Yeah. Right. Oh, Kalanad. That's why I'm in the back. Oh, okay. Yeah. Kalanad. Tomoya. He okay. gets that good job as, a, as uh, an electric worker in, mm-hmm. you know, hanging, stringing electric lines, et cetera. And his dad ends up screwing up and going to jail, and he gets fired from his job because of his father. Wow. It's like, so that's what makes me think. It's like, oh, great job, administrator guy. Now you probably <laughs> messed your entire family's chances up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> like, eh. mm-hmm. So, in other words, don't do that. Yeah, let's, let's just, try and avoid just, things like that. Just like, suggesting. Keep it above board. How about that? Yeah. Just um, a yeah. Uh, moving on to uh, more legit news. You might remember a few weeks ago <laughs> when Kanakawa announced they were considering founding a new studio. Well, as of this week, they're no longer just considering it. The media company announced on Tuesday it's founded a new 3D CG and visual effects anime studio named Studio Kadan. The studio centered around director Hiroyuki Sashita, who's headed many Polygon Pictures, 3D CG, anime, including Knights of Sidonia, uh, Ajin, and Blam, among others. The studio will focus on production of full 3D CG with a cell look, uh, extending reality 3D modeling, projection mapping, CG for video games, visual effects for live action films, etc. Nice. Yeah, so that, that makes a lot of sense to kind of condense all those things together. Um, meanwhile, the company Crest announced this week that it has founded a new digital animation studio called uh, One Double Studio, although it's One Zero Zero Studio. Um, who is Crest? They make toothpaste. No. Um, they're an entertainment. Early white. Yeah. Uh, they're an entertainment planning, production, and human resource management company, but basically a production company. Uh, the new studio plans to do work involving TV series, streaming, movies, games, and music videos. Very media mix-ish. Yeah. Uh, Kotaro Horiguchi, a producer at Studio Grafinica, is heading the new studio. They are, of course, looking to hire more staff members and seeking animators from both inside and outside Japan. Though you'll probably need to know Japanese. Uh, hmm. Crest... I know of Japanese. I'm yeah. the next flight. Here we go. Uh, Crest was founded in March of 2018 as a content production company and has worked on anime such as Kuma 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 Bear and <laughs> the currently airing Seven Nights Revolution Hero Successor. Mm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, now, so, I wonder, the, the human resource yes, yes. management company, I wonder yeah. if that means that they they are amenable to some other studio showing up and be like, listen, we're in a crunch, we really need, like, five people and they turn around and go you five go <laughs> I, mean, I suspect it's... it basically means talent management you know they have a stable of people that right. they're sort of running okay. um, as opposed to like classic human 
res- human resources. I don't know. Yeah. Um, it just doesn't mesh well otherwise. Well, I mean, it'd be interesting if you had a, a very stable talent pool. Yeah. And that, you know, somebody runs in and you say, okay, well, we're paying the talent pool like peanuts. Uh, we want $500 <laughs> billion, dollars, and then you can have these five people for five weeks only. Mm-hmm. That would be a great way to manage your resources. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Harvesting the monies out of your poor, underpaid folks. Yeah, certainly a thing. Um, I have a story about that, which we'll have to sh- wait for after the news. Um, also this week, news stories that we wanted to mention, but not necessarily the, uh, um, the biggest things to talk about. Uh, but a nice thing, Kyoto Animation announced this week that its fan appreciation event will return after yeah. four years. Nice. Yeah. yeah. I saw that, right? I saw that announcement. Nice. I'm like, yay, Kyoto Animation. Yes. It'll be in the form of the fifth Kyoto Animation Thanks event, Kyoto Ani Musical Festival Inspiration for the Future. Yeah. <sighs> <laughs> <laughs> uh, love their long names. This is the first music festival the studio is directly presenting. And the first fan appreciation event since 2017. A similar event had been planned for 2019, but was canceled in the wake of the KyoAni arson attack and changed into a free public memorial. This year's event will take place at Kyoto's Rome Theater, R-O-H-M, on November 20th and 21st. Oh. Yeah, that's cool. It's a shame it couldn't happen like a month earlier. You know, like in like the first couple of weeks of October, maybe. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> that would have been really cool. Well, um, yeah. More to come on that. Yes. Um, good news, I hope, please. Please come. Well, well I, mm-hmm. I um, find good. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm I'm not that that evil. Um, maybe. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> Um, oh, that's weird. My, the image for this has disappeared. Shoot. Oh. That's something I wanted to show you all, but that's okay. We will not be able to do that. Um, moving on slightly. Um, uh, things moved on a little. There we go. Uh, doomp. The Dondoko Forest area of the upcoming Ghibli Park, which is the area featuring beloved film My Neighbor Totoro, mm-hmm. is officially under construction. The Aichi Prefectural Government also revealed a new visual for the area. You can find it online. Uh, It also announced that the park as a whole will also contain a 6.3 meter long recreation of the airship from Castle in the Sky. Wow. Okay. And a replica of the Witch's Home in Earwig and the Witch. The Giant Ghibli Warehouse, love that name, Hill of Youth and Dondoko Forest areas of the theme park are slated to open in the fall of 2022. So only a little over a year away, followed by Mononoke Village and Witch Valley areas about a year later. Gogo 13 might be the oldest manga still in production and tied for Guinness World Record, but there are still a few things the series can do for the first time. The legendary Hitman manga will soon get its first ever spin-off manga. Wow. Yeah. The announcement okay. of the identity of the new spin-off's protagonist as someone who makes Duke Togo's impossible shots possible... A constant helper working an unseen job that they still draw pride from, and one of the few people whom Duke Togo actually trusts. I have no idea what any of that means, but just FYI. So this is basically Q. Yeah, I guess maybe. Yeah, basically. The the little tinkerer that makes all the impossibilities possible. Uh, the original creator, Takao Saito, and his Saito Productions are credited with creating the new manga, which will launch on July 17th. Gogo 13 has been going since 1968 and has inspired two live action films, an anime film, an OVA, and a TV anime series. Wow. And the anime film has the most wonderful CGI. <laughs> <at> the <anime. laughs> and now for the anime announcements of the last few weeks. A new anime series has been announced for Lupin the Third to celebrate the oh, franchise's really? 50th yep. anniversary. Yep. Oh my god. Um, titled Lupin the Third Part 6. So it's mainline. Sweet. Lupin has inspired six previous TV anime, several theatrical films, and according to Anime News Network, at least 27 television specials. 27? <laughs> wow. Not an exaggeration. Oh. Wow. That is kind of a, the yearly thing. Uh, this, this year's Lupin the Third TV special. Lupin has just touched such a such a the heartstring apparently in Japan. It's amazing. Lupin has touched so many people. 
I admit. And the enemy's good too. Yeah. <laughs> what? Um, go back and well, anyway. Um, <laughs> it's almost if, ten. If you've seen mm. Lupin, you know what I'm talking about. The yeah. Lupin. Yeah. Uh, Shogakukan revealed a TV anime inspired by um, the Awashi manga, premiering in spring 2022. The manga centers on a middle schooler who named Aoi, who tries to hide his strong talent for soccer, but gets discovered after some disaster by a coach. Sounds a little Bamboo Blade to me, maybe? Hmm. Well, I liked Bamboo Blade. Yeah, so could be that kind of idea. Um, entertainment company Shoban has launched a new original multimedia project called Linear Dush, featuring girls who aim to become drivers in a super-fast Formula car race. The project is currently holding open auditions for its regular cast members seeking females 15 or older with or without experience or a professional contract. Interesting. Hmm. Um, okay. this, for, for, in, in case folks are curious, this is how Macross often gets its you know, sort of ingenue female characters. They'll hold a big casting call for just sort of, you know, any teenage Japanese girl who wants to uh, audition, uh, and they might come wow. in. Uh, the cast will start stage readings and stage plays later this year with more mixed media development plan for next year, including a game and anime. Mm. Uh, Side Games Saikomi manga website announced that they're with a foggy reincarnated as a pretty fantasy girl manga. Mm -hmm is getting a TV anime adaptation. Basically, it's about an unpopular 32-year-old salaryman who gets transported to a fantasy world, as happens to a lot of them, but now has the body of a beautiful girl and has to defeat the demon lord of the world if he wants his male body back. So, a bit of a twist on the premise there. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> all, all, I've got, all I've got in the back of my head is your name. Waking right. up, you like the different body and going, oh, Opie, neat. <laughs> like, oh, could okay. be, could be, who knows. Um, well, say, I mean, that's going to be the gratuitous moment right oh, there yeah. for everyone. It's like, oh, Absolutely. we're waiting to see it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and whoever would want to go back? I mean, despite the gender part, you want to mm -hmm. be a 32 year old salaryman? You want to go back yeah, to right? that? Why wouldn't you just want to be a young person in a fantasy world? I just, you know? I think people like their original bodies. I, I, I think that they, they don't like being changed without their permission and consent. I don't know. I think that's like important. Fifty percent taller and about fifty percent younger. Fifty percent taller? Yes. John, I know Who you. Are you? I'd be enormous. <laughs> you want to be a nine <laughs> foot tall teenage girl? Yes. Well, right. well I, okay. I didn't say gender, but it just younger and taller. I would totally be on board with that. I could probably do without some of the metal in my body. Yeah. Yeah. See. Yeah. Like there, there's yeah, things you could tweak. That's an interesting, interesting isekai there. Um, Nine feet tall. I would be like this <laughs> giant among little you little little ah! And given isekai rules, you would be not just younger; you'd be like eight. Oh. Eight years old. <laughs> he grew unusually fast. <laughs> <laughs> I like candy. Make pictures. We. Oh no, boy. <laughs> if you like Thank the you. current. Say what? I said, anywho, moving yeah. on. <laughs> if you like the current trend of virtual tourism anime, check this one out. A new original anime project has been announced from Studio HB titled Tabihani, which will follow two girls traveling across Japan together to visit memorable photo spots. Oh. Yeah. So very, I'm on board. Uh, yeah. I'm right on board right now. Mm. I'm picking that one. <laughs> I'm, doing. I'm picking I mean, that one. I, I could actually, John, I could feel it through the screen. I was just like going, oh, God. I was like, it's like a sledgehammer. I was just like, yeah, he's, he's going to be in on that. I've seen all the campgrounds that are like in like, a, you know, mm -hmm. close to Tokyo area. I've, you know, seen kids driving around on Super Cubs to various spots to go. view and experience uh, Mount Fuji. Uh, yeah, I'm all over this. I, I, I believe you. In fact, they said it was inspired by an American named John. Um, turns out. When's the royal check coming? <laughs> Finally, we all know <laughs> that anime can turn literally anything into a pretty character, and this next announcement is another great example. <laughs> Aoi Pro, Amuse, and Origamics Partners have announced the new Station Idol Latch franchise this week, which reimagines all 30 stations of Tokyo's Yamanote line, train line as pretty boy idols who also work as station staff members. 
The oh. East Japan Railway Company is collaborating on and supervising the new project. I so want to be a fly on the wall of the approval meetings. <laughs> the plans include an anime, manga, game, and a novelization, as well as music releases, concerts, of course, and other events. The uh. franchise will kick off with a weekly voice drama starting on YouTube on June 3rd. So, Rail Romanesque done with boy idols. Yep. Right. Exactly. Wow. wow. Do you think yeah, any of them will, do you think the anime will have an episode of the one where they, they have to leave the, the, the train control center and to go to the bathroom and let some schmuck <laughs> drive the train? No, they're yeah. idols. They don't have body functions. Oh, exactly. that's right. Yes, that's yes, that's how that works. Um, but yeah, this is one of those things where, again, I'm, I, it will do incredibly well. What I am a little curious about is that... Um, I was not aware that there's a significant amount of female train otaku. There may well be, right? But that's not kind of the, the stereotype. So I wonder if there's a significant female train otaku audience that they're trying to tap into, right? Just like oh, all the other things. Yeah. They have to be. Exactly. So that's kind of interesting to think that, they're, that that's out there that they're looking for. Um, Will it also be like we've seen in anime and in real life where there are characters that are from a certain place, Osai Academy, mm -hmm. where you've got girls and pans are all over the town. You've got standees and stuff that the, the businesses that are featured in the anime. I'm just, all I can envision is like showing up to the train station and whatever that idol oh, is yeah. singing on the <clears throat> train station sound system. And then there's little standees and all kinds of stuff pictured for that special station idol. It's going to be like, oh, wow. <laughs> I, I doubt they would have it singing, but yes, I, I, I agree. That, well, uh, train station laws and such. They're <laughs> there's, not there's, allowed to have singing well, music kind of thing? I mean, um, uh, there, there's only so much you can do on a train station that will block out the sound of, like, uh, announcements and such. Okay. Uh, so you'd have to have that. But yes, I, I, there will definitely be standees and, and stuff around unquestionably. Yeah. Um, so it'll be fun. It'll be interesting. What if Amtrak did that? Yeah. Oh. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. You want to see that? You want to see the idol for East Bayonne, New Jersey? Oh boy. How about the idol for Trenton? Oh, <laughs> or, or better yet, or better yet, the Mark, uh, the Mark train idol. There you go. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. I, I, when I, I'm kind of. It's a needle out of the arm. Sorry. What's brilliant about it is that it's the train stations. Yeah. So you're going to have, there's going to be an Akihabara idol. Yeah, right? That would really be interesting. You know, there, there's going to be a, um, uh, just Shinjuku a Shibuya. A Shinjuku, right. You know, yeah. um, all, all, all the islands. That's not on the Yamanohi Yamano line, unfortunately. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, there's, there's, there's some, definitely some interesting stuff. I mean, the Shibuya one will be extro extremely well dressed, I'm sure. Um, yeah. uh, and I'm sure we'll have a little dog with him. I wonder if they do that. Would, would they include oh, was it Hachiko, the, yeah. uh, the the dog? I wonder if they, yeah. they would they would do that because that, that that's that might be you know pulling heartstrings a little bit too much. It's like ah, oh, that's nostalgia that you're trying to grab onto there. Who knows? Well, I'm sure there'll be a standee by Hachiko. You boy, you oh bet. yeah, absolutely. <laughs> like right next to it, be no like oh. question. No question. I wonder. I wonder how long this will will last. Will this last forever? So yes. that anybody who goes to Japan in the next like five years will see this stuff at these stations, or are they going to run it for a season and then whoosh, out the door? Um, it's a good question because I I think that's there, there are a couple factors there. One, and the, the big one is how hard are they going to push it? Yeah. Because you have some of these these series where they're just like, I don't care if you don't like this. It is going to be an Akihabara every day for the next three years. Right. Um, um, but th this may not have that kind of a push behind it. Um, well, Rail Roman S didn't seem to have much of a push at all. Challenge. But on uh, this side, mm -hmm. it didn't seem <clears throat> to have much of a push. Who yeah, knows? exactly. Like mm -hmm. how many, we know that there are theme trains. We've seen right? all those mm -hmm. theme trains. Right. So yep. every girl station train thing whatever they are mm -hmm. um i would wonder whether they pushed it hard so that those images are on like the conductor's door girl train i, that, think, that... I think the rail romanesque uh oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Are okay. Girls. okay okay gotcha. okay yeah, 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 yeah. um yeah. and i'd like so i could imagine on 
you know, in Japan, mm-hmm. yeah, maybe they did like yeah. plate plaster them on the mm-hmm. front of the train, and that was that was their push. Mm-hmm. But here, that series just came up and disappeared. <laughs> yeah, it didn't. It, I mean, well, I mean, it's, it's like the two fandoms don't match between the rail fans and, yeah. and the otaku. Yeah. That there, there just wasn't that much. Of a, we don't really have any yeah. Japan rail fans over here, unfortunately. Yeah. I mean, yeah, because and then train fans and like diesel mm, train fans, but like yeah. a completely different fandom. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. So it's not like you're gonna get that many of me. <laughs> yeah, there is no like, like, real, like uh, No, there is. Yeah, I want the Lake Biwa make... trunk line. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Like uh, the who? The was it? The who's it? The was it? Mm-hmm. What about the Great Six Eleven? Yeah, now that's a steam yeah, train. You they... Get on. But no lie though, there was um. Okay, so yeah, just folks, I I, I do watch trains a little bit of the rail fan. So there's online. There's a live video cam for Deschler, Ohio, mm. which is a, a rail crossing. Okay. And and it's actually famous for rail fans like across America, mm. and it has its own little tiny park, right at the trestle, oh. and it's and it's just this, it, I, I cannot explain it. You have to see it for yourself. So Deschler Live, Deschler Train, okay. Live. and the other night I think it was actually last night. No, mm. yeah, last night they they like a whole bunch of RVs had set up. They set up Klieg lights for to take pictures of the train as it's coming mm. in at night and they had a whole bunch of people out there with cameras taking pictures they have radios they mm. have all these things that let them know as the train is coming in sometimes they can even contact the, the, the uh, engineer on the wow. train not advisable if you can do that because it's usually illegal but mm. this is the <laughs> engineer they do get the hell off my track <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> thanks I won't be able to stop this, um, <laughs> but uh, but they take, you know, and so like, you know, train comes and they actually have like barbecues and stuff like that. So you can actually see mm. these people. There's actually oh, a guy dressed up party. as, yeah, well, yeah, there was one yeah. guy dressed up as a unicorn. Okay. Mm-hmm. And was running around in circles of train was, was going by. Um, very much. Interesting. So, <laughs> so you're not going to see that much of a crossover between that. <laughs> And idols, because I don't know yeah. what the idol would be for Deschler, Ohio. <laughs> Again, East Bay of New Jersey, you know, right. it's a very specific kind <laughs> of idol. It is the advantage of Japan being a very different culture. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> How much time do we spend I on looking at those fan trains? On those Quite a lot. Those theme we spent yeah. a ton. Yeah. A ton. Mm-hmm. But those boy, were they worth it. Oh, I, you know, I want to go on every single one. Yeah. The, the, the one with the foot pole. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So for those curious what the heck we're talking about. Um, <laughs> like every says, time oh, we do this. Is, this, is, this is the anime channel? What the hell are they talking about? Um, the, um, uh, the various train lines have various specialty trains. Uh, so they have all their, their, their standard trains and their bullet trains. And they'll have half a dozen maybe um, – specialty trains which will have special services in them so you might have one that is set up like a 1920s rail car right so it's all that that kind of seating and so forth and there'll just be like two cars total on this train and it runs a certain spot and so we end up spending i don't know two hours um going through all the different things they had and all the different pikachu train pikachu train pikachu yep. train pikachu absolutely train. Yep, as a Point bath train and a bar train. The, oh boy! Oh, the, the Pikachu train. To be clear, like that's not like a, a thing that's there for a week. Like that is a that train is a they have you can reserve and all that stuff. stuff. Yeah, with a playroom for the kids. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's insane. That you'll wind up Pikachu. playing with yourself. <laughs> Wait, what? Uh, yeah. uh, Steve. <laughs> wow, Steve hit it right at ten o'clock. <laughs> Nicely done. Well Nicely timed, done. Steve. Well timed. <laughs> Um, oh, will there be a Mugen train? Great question. Oh, oh of course there will. Be. I bet you there will be. <laughs> yeah, that's interesting because it would be like a, a 1930s themed, yeah. you know, train, and then you just throw giant orbs of gunk everywhere. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> oh, but I, you know, not that you'd go through the Death Forest at right. Fuji, but. Imagine that in like a little bit further north, mm. where it's got a you know a little oh, bit more snowy conditions yeah, and a little bit yeah, more forested, cool. sort of like where you know Netsuko mm. and her brother come from. Yeah. So 
then make that train crawl through a forested area slowly with all that kind of create all that'd that be great that'd be fun yeah totally. <laughs> yeah give you the chills just just enough you know yeah that'd be awesome but nothing nothing scary yeah so that's all the news for this week thank you all for watching we'll see you all next week and we're gonna see if the line is there yeah it's there it's very much there line is back line coon Mine, Sean. <laughs> <laughs> Everything's getting more fun. Right, exactly. Yeah. yeah totally. <laughs> um, man, yeah. That's a Although that wouldn't surprise me. I bet you there is a Q line set up somewhere in Japan, mm -hmm. and there's a little character yeah, that stands right. at the end of it that is Line Chan yep. or Line Kun mm -hmm. that says, please start here. Yes, <laughs> you're absolutely right. <laughs> Almost guaranteed. it. Definitely. Cause I can't remember. There was an anime. Oh, I wish I could remember it. Where this girl was in love with the little um, uh, construction zone. Oh, wow! Standee with uh -huh. the little construction helmet, wow. and he bows. Yeah. You know, for, sorry for the inconvenience. Mm -hmm. I cannot remember what the yeah. anime was. But yeah. this girl, she took pictures of it all the time, and she just she adored that character. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, that's really unique. Mm -hmm. I've, yeah, I've heard anything <laughs> like that. Really unique. That's really cool.